You know, we've had a number, what, eight different FDA-approved drugs in AML since April of 2017. And our challenge really has been how to incorporate all of these new drugs um, into our uh, algorithms for treating AML, and where do they fit best? Um, what I'd like to talk about first is venetoclax. Um, why don't we start um, with you, Sasha? Give us some background on the data for venetoclax that led to the FDA approval in terms of combinations with HMAs and low-dose cytarabine in older well, and unfit patients. Venetoclax is an antagonist of BCL2 that's been FDA approved for CLL and lymphoid malignancies for some time now, and I think the community's gotten pretty familiar with it as a single agent in that context. What's different in AML is when the drug was tested in relapsed refractory patients, uh, activity was seen, but it was really quite modest, and as a single agent, it really didn't go very far. However, when it was added to low-intensity chemotherapy, there was much more substantial activity, um, so much so that studies have largely been focused on frontline therapy of unfit older patients or really the, the more extremes of age, uh, either patients over the age of 65 with comorbidity or patients over the age of 75 without regard to comorbidity to see whether the improvement in uh, activity in that setting would just lead to transformative uh, outcomes. And I must say that the data have been really eye-opening in a few ways. One is it's not really new that you can add a drug to low-dose chemotherapy and get much better response rates. But what's been really hard has been able, the ability to do that with durability of that response. So for example, the, in Britain, there have been a number of studies that added, uh, sorry, one study that added a number of agents to low-dose RSC, and none of them had led to better survival, despite many of them improving survival, um, sometimes even uh, sorry, uh, uh, improving remission rate, sometimes even doubling remission rate, and yet not improving survival. What's very interesting here is the reason that happened was there was not durability of the responses that were seen. Now, there's not randomized data with venetoclax plus hypomethylating agents or venetoclax plus low-dose RSC yet, but those data have been collected and we should have those soon. In spite of that not being at our fingertips, the FDA has uh, looked at the data and found them convincing enough to approve either the combination of low-dose, uh, excuse me, low-dose RSC plus venetoclax or either uh, azocytidine or, or decitabine obviously can be used in this setting. Uh, the approval is for combination of hypomethylating agent with venetoclax. The doses are actually different. The dose of 400 milligrams with the hypomethylating agent, dose of 600 milligrams with low-dose RSC. Um, and the, uh, the results were updated at ASH in terms of longer-term follow-up, but it basically shows the same thing. The response rates with these combinations are in the range of 60 to 70% for CR or CRI. The durability of these responses is in the range of about a year on average. Um, and the overall survival, I think, was 17 months with the hypomethylating agent combination, which is really quite good. And despite that, there's not a big increase in terms of toxicity by this uh, in comparison to what might be expected with a hypomethylating agent uh, alone, with one important exception, which is these drugs are really quite myelosuppressive. Uh, and the approach to treating the patient with the combination really is different. You don't just start this therapy and keep it going until you see response. You need to look for response on the studies they looked a month in. And if the patients had an aplastic bone marrow, which many of them had, that actually was a predictor of people going into response. If there was resistant leukemia, you could continue therapy at that point. But if your bone marrow was empty, you should stop therapy, hold, wait for count recovery, and that led to better safety. And the early death rate on these studies was actually quite low, which is encouraging. So again, looking at really high-risk patients who didn't have great options, now we're seeing much longer median survivals, granted on single-arm studies, but quite promising and, and much better than what's been seen historically.